Hey guys, a welcome back to Artosis Cast. Uh, today we are looking at Motive up here in the top right of Kickback, going up against Hyun. Uh, of course, a um, Motive, uh, you know, doing a, a great job getting into ASL, not doing a great job in ASL in particular. Uh, and then Hyun, unfortunately, did not make it this season, but you know, still one of the stronger players in the world. Uh, and, you know, it, always good to kind of check in with him and see how he's doing. So, uh, ZVP here on Kickback. Uh, Kickback, so far, is giving us very, very interesting games. Just to note, 3,000 gas, 1,200 minerals. That's everything except the main bases. That is how much is in all of these. And that's because you get those three bases so easily. It's a really smart way to design the map, honestly. Otherwise, uh, whoever gets map control, like in a certain matchup, right? Like Zerg versus Protoss would be Zerg. Protoss versus Terran would be Protoss, so on and so forth. Or, well, I guess specifically those two, really. Uh, would get a huge advantage without that. Because it's like you kind of rocket up to your three base and kind of keep containment and get a ton of resources everywhere. Here, they run out more quickly. So it's like more playable if someone gets more bases, right? So I really like the map design. Kickback is turning into an amazing map so far. Really, really interesting games have been going on here. Uh, so I'm I'm very much enjoying it. I hope that you guys are as well. I don't know if people have favorite maps from this ASL slash ladder season so far. Uh, and honestly, this one's not my favorite. I actually really like most of them. The Minstrel, the two-player map right now. I mean, maybe I'll kick myself for saying this later, but I really like that map so far. Kickback has been super interesting. Uh, it, you know, it, even Dominator's very good. Yeah, I don't know. The, the The map pool is super cool. Monty Hall, though, can go suck on eggs. That is that is not a good map, but I'll cast games on it. That's fun, at least. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, it is a pool first here from Hyun, and it's a gateway opener from uh, Motive. So Hyun gets down here and scouts immediately. He sees that pool timing, so he'll be able to get back and defend against this very, very well. Hatchery coming up for Hyun. Drone coming to check out exactly what's going on. Zealot comes up to try to catch that. And it will take just a little bit of damage. This is not, this is not a huge deal that the drone is out here. <laughs> But there is something you can do. If he could mine the minerals, this is kind of a funny thing, okay? Drones, um, I believe they lose the minerals. That, oh, wait, no, no, no. That's not what it is. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second, actually. The, the Zerglings force their way by, but take a ton of damage to do so. So that was kind of a crazy move. Four Zerglings remain, and they've taken some heavy damage. Uh, what I was going to say is drones actually regain their health if they make an extractor, then cancel. It's not true for other buildings, but it's true for the extractor. So isn't that weird? Yeah. That's kind of a weird thing, but okay. It's not like imbalanced or anything like that. It's just like, huh. So uh, the Zerglings do get one probe so far. So, so far, it's actually the run by was good, I would say. If he can get like one to two more probes, he's going to be super happy with that choice. Now, because he did do the run by... The Zealots are going to be sent out by Motive, and that's going to force more Zerglings, right? So that's why getting one is probably not good enough. If you have the Sixlings just kind of sitting out here, much less likely to see Motive leave the base now, right? That's why we normally see four or five Zealots made before they go, and they'll have a cannon finishing, and then they'll just kind of go out with those to pressure. Here, he's allowed to pressure a lot quicker because the Zerglings are in his base already. The worst has already occurred. So yeah, that is going to force some more Lings. And, of course, this is keeping a very low drone count on Hyun. Hyun is only on 11 drones right now while he tries to catch these. Some, I mean, this is a lot of clicking, man. Look at this. 350 APM right now as Hyun tries to micro these as well as catch these zealots down here. Third hatchery does go up. Lots of lings being made still. Just basically pure lings. There's no photon cannon yet. And this is a double hold wall. So... Not sure what to think here. Looks like he loses one there. I feel like losing these lings right now is is pretty bad. Like, if you're going to go for a mass ling bust, you're going to want to flank with some lings, right? The the amount of damage being put out in the zealots is going to, like, double if you're flanking with lings. Anyways, the uh, zerglings come up and do start to fight. The four zealots will be able to force these five back. They've already taken damage as well. Photon cannon on the way. 
I don't think the Lings are going to do anything. Zergling speed is just now on the way. You know, maybe, maybe as this finishes, we'll see Motive move out with the five Zealots, and then the Lings can surround him, and then the Lings were actually very worthwhile. I feel like that's going to be what it needs to be here for Hyun. So as he walks out, he sees, yep, plenty of Lings out there. Just a little bit of micro back and forth there as he waits for the cannon to finish. Nexus is done. Stargate on the way. The Stargate does feel a little bit late, doesn't it? Layer finishes up. We'll see if that Spire gets started as well. Yeah, there's the Spire. Zergling speed almost done. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to fly that back. Plus one is already going. There's the Citadel right under that Overlord so he can see it. And when you're with the Overlord and you see, like, okay, plus one is spinning and Citadel gets started, obviously this points towards not Dark Templars, but instead uh, more heavy Zealot pressure, right? So he put down another pylon here. He'll definitely add at least one more gateway. Uh, and, yeah, it's going to be some Speed Zealots roaming the map in a little bit, along with those Corsairs, of course. You do have to keep those Corsairs pretty safe. Ooh, nice catch there. Good turnaround from uh, from Hyun. Not that there was a lot of information to actually end up gaining there with the probe, but good catch. Gills it very, very quickly. The speedling's going out onto the map. No real vision here. So as the lings run up, they're going to miss all the zealots moving out. This is some real potential right now on both sides for damage. Like if the lings immediately run in, they could take out these photon cannons or possibly run past like into the natural or something. Now, as he gets up there, he's going to see no zealots in the wall, so might want to just turn around and go back home. Okay, the Overlord actually saw them also. So a lot of units going to have to be made. Some Scourge being made right now as well. Plenty of Lings on the way. Yeah, catches a few. The, the movement here of motives so far this game, I think, is a bit better than what we've seen from Hyun. And that is an important thing. You know, we see a lot of battling back and forth. So the Zergling's going to go ahead for a surround. And Hyun's going to be able to clear this pretty well. Uh, plus one is actually not done. It's very close to done, which makes this feel kind of like an anti-timing. But honestly, I, whenever an upgrade is about to finish and you lose the units it that it would have made much stronger, it feels like an anti-timing. But sometimes it's not. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but if you have a time opened up where, like, you can force a ton out of your opponent or, like, maybe maybe there was about to be mutas and then the, the zealots don't do anything at all, really, it, it does kind of feel like an anti-time. I'm just saying it might not have been because of how low Econ Hyun was. Maybe it's, maybe it's a reasonable choice to just force as many Zerglings as possible. Uh, you know, as early as possible, the earlier you can make them, you know, produce uh, something that's not drones, the better that is for you. Although that one did feel a little bit, a little bit off because now he has legs and plus one. Imagine all those right now. I think the the move out. What I'm trying to say here is the move out wasn't that bad. In retrospect, looking at what's been made. Maybe it would have been a lot stronger to move out later. There you go. I finally figured out how to say it. Professional commentator, and sometimes I can't even get my thoughts out of my head. Okay. Uh, Speedling's getting up here. A couple uh, High Templars around the cannons. Ooh, make an Archon, make an Archon. This is... Oh, he's actually just trying to dodge out. Okay, going to go back to this Photon Cannon now. <laughs> this is kind of a crazy game right now. Not, this is not normally something you see. The Lings come in and kill two cannons, and the two Eye Templars are kind of kind of trying to bait them into a Photon Cannon. Corsair is here, flying around. We have a bunch of Mutas coming out here for Hyun. Very, very aggressive. This is like already 13 Mutas. 14, 15. He is making a ton, and a ton of Scourge on the way. Now, with that plus one uh, armor as well, Plus one uh, is already done for the Corsair, so you're definitely going to want that Carapace. But if you're bringing in, like, 12 Scourge, man, you are going to be able to force these Corsairs away and just deal with the cannons with your Mutas. So uh, the plus one armor might not be as important as, as we might normally uh, assign its value to be. Okay, comes in, starts attacking. 
Okay, dodges that storm reasonably well. The Cor Corsairs get pushed back a little bit. Okay, he is hitting a few of them. This was like 16 plus mutas, and my god, the storms are insane. But he does end up killing all the Corsairs. Oh god, the Archon is actually being morphed right there and going to be killed off. Another Corsair came down and bled into the Scourge. Suddenly, even though that looked pretty good for Motive at the beginning, Hyun takes huge control of this game. Nine mutas right now just bullying this expansion, going after that Nexus at the moment. Can't really fly up here. The probes were saved, so at least that's something. The Scourge still kind of zoning out any Corsairs from helping out here. And there is no real way to save this. Like, maybe if he had morphed the Archon a little bit further back, he could have come up and pushed them back with the help of a couple Corsairs, but that is not the case. So Motive's going to end up losing this Nexus. Uh, Hyun, in the meantime, has enough defense back at home as well that these Zealots did have to turn around. New Nexus being made, so he's kind of given this one up. Definitely feels like a winning position right now for Hyun, but, well, that that still, there's still some play, I want to say, for Motive. A little bit, at least, right? He's got his Psy Storm. There's not a lot of Hydras on the map or something. He's going to retake a base. Maybe, can he can he go up to three base and go heavy Psy Storm and maybe be okay? I feel like the timing for that might not be there. I feel like Hyun may go into Lurker Hydra and kind of just set up an area that can't be broken if Motive tries to go Nexus Nexus. But he has a lot of speed zealots right now, so maybe there's like a, a move out timing on the two base. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. It's a tough position. Good storm did go down there as the uh, mutas tried to come back here. A lot of damage dealt to them. Some fresher mutas come in, but he does have to watch out for those psi storms. few extra drones have been made to get that economy back up. In fact, more drones now than probes on the map. A lot of hydras being made. Overlord speed coming up. Uh, Hydralisk speed already done with range on the way. And there is that third nexus. So he's going to go for the third nexus off just the four gates. So it is kind of an interesting choice. I feel like the counter to this is lurkers. I feel like if he goes Lurker immediately after this, that's going to be very good for Hyun. I think the the three base economy might be a little bit slow here. Even though Motive is going to have great gas income, which is really important, I don't know that that's going to be enough. Okay, good storm as these uh, Mutas come in. Going to try to make an Archon, but the Mutas get on top of that. Might want to target down the cannons. I could see the cannons actually causing a bit of a problem, but he's going to get that Archon very quickly. Going after the Photon Cannons now as well. And is going to fly away from that one. Now, a lot of speeds out going down towards this fourth base location. Unfortunately, for Motive, a lot of Hydras there waiting. Their own plus one attack almost done. There is one one here uh, with plus two armor on the way for these Zealots. All right, going to dive onto... Ooh, good storm goes down. Dives onto these cannons once again. Zealots moving out once again. Muta's just going to rotate and force them back in. More gates coming up. So we're getting up to eight gates right now for Motive. Almost got that Dragoon range. Lots and lots of Hydras across here. But I, I haven't noticed the Lurker upgrade yet. So he might try to fight pure as pure Hydra here. Which I, it's, maybe, maybe that can work out. How many High Templars does he actually have? He has, he has lost quite a few this game. So we only see three High Templars right now. Yeah, maybe the, maybe the Pure Hydra is the way. Another hatchery going up for Hyun here at nine o'clock. Macro of Hyun is looking very, very good this game. Look at that. Seven hatch, eight hatch, nine hatch. Some Scourge kind of being spread all over the place. Overlords as well. If we just kind of zoom out, you can see, right? Patrolling Scourge in various locations. Overlords watching other areas. You can't leave Motive's base right now. Like, Motive, Motive is kind of stuck in there. It's not that he's contained, but anything he does, Hyun will have advanced warning of. 
Still, though, Hyun only macroing up Hydras and Mutas. There are more Mutas still being made here. So, yeah, it looks like what he's decided to do instead of that Lurker Hydra style that we see pretty often, he's using a style that I feel like this is a kind of older style. It was more popular like a few years ago. I want to say two, three years ago, we were seeing this pretty often where uh, the pure, it would be like pure Hydra, but also keeping a group of Mutas. And the Mutas would do things like harass, but like more for picking off High Templars. Now here, we actually saw like heavy, heavy micro, but not really getting anything done. Who cares if you kill a Dragoon? It does feel like if you're going to spend a bunch of money on them, you might want to just dive and kill High Templars so your, your Hydralisk Swarm uh, is going to pay off. Now Motive moving up towards 12 o'clock. Looks like he wants this area uh, cleared out so he can make a Nexus probably. Kadarian Amulet on the way, as well as that plus two attack. Oh, see, that's the type of catch you want. Less storms for your Hydras. Lots of Dragoons out right now. No Hive Tech or anything on the other side. Plus one Mutalisk attack is on the way, by the way. I hadn't even noticed that. More and more Mutalisks being fielded. He's definitely going to go sniping on, Hydra, or, uh, on Hi High Templars. So Motive right now getting ready for this, this fourth Nexus, for sure. Kind of spreading out a bit. Okay. Make make Hyun run into you, I guess? Hyun has droned up. 65 drones is pretty insane. All right, Motive moving his army across the map a bit. Ooh, catches a few of the Hydras over here. This is going to be tough to take the engagement correctly. Hydra's kind of moving up to the north. Okay, picks off an Observer there, we hear die. So many Hydras in the way. It's basically a maxed out Hyun here. Now, he starts to attack, gets some insanely nasty storms here, and it looks like this fifth base location is very likely to fall. And as long as he falls back in kind of a defensive arc here, it's really hard for pure Hydra to attack in. Now, there is a Hydra counterattack coming on. Uh, the the Mutas actually go ahead and dive in here as well. So some High Templars being forced into an Archon, exactly not what you want. But this group of Hydras will get cleaned. Kills off like a single gateway, unpowers another one. So it does hurt that production a little bit. Diving up onto this expansion. Not a lot left over there, by the way. These goons are going to be able to pick off this hatchery as well. New base is up here for Motive. Throwing down some Psystorms, helping him out to kill off everything in his base up here. Now Hyun moving out with his army. Hyun is up 50 supply. What in the world? His macro is like insane this game. Thing is, if you have enough Psystorms in a good position, you can actually kill a lot of Hydras. So some pretty big storms are going down, but he is picking off some of these high tempers. Look at this. Look at how many storms are actually being utilized against those mutas. And he will kill the mutas, but does he have enough storms now for these hydras? And I think the answer is a resounding no. Hyun really showing some mastery with those mutas. Even though there was like a lot of very cost inefficient mo moments, uh, he is able to take down motive. Very cool to see someone still utilizing that style. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen it. I, I do wonder for anyone who's um, stayed in and watched, do you prefer this kind of super active mutalisk style? Or do you prefer someone that kind of goes lurker hydra, makes a very hard to enter area, and maybe techs up uh, later game into the hive as opposed to just trying to win with the uh, layer tech? Because it's like, okay, yeah, he is getting a Hive right now, technically. But that wasn't really what the build was, right? He was sitting there maxed on Muta Hydra. And just trying to trying to be just disgusting with those Mutas. Anyways, I, I do wonder. Because he, I think the Lurker style is slightly stronger. But obviously what you saw here from Hyun is very usable at the pro level. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.